Throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. There are countless fantastical creatures throughout mythology and folklore, many of which are depicted as dangerous or ugly, and many times they are depicted as both. But tales from medieval Europe and Asia persist of a creature said to endlessly roam throughout the wilds of the world, whose appearance alone can stun anyone with its ethereal beauty. A beast who embodies all that is magical and pure in the world, that could not be captured by brute force, only by tenderness and a pure heart. The Unicorn The iconic depiction of a unicorn is that of a stunning white horse with a spiraled horn galloping through a deep forest perpetually in springtime. In heraldry and later art styles, the unicorn is sometimes shown as having a lion-like tail, cloven hooves like a deer, and even a small wisp of a beard. While other mythical creatures such as the dragon represented evil and destructive force, the unicorn represented all that was good in the world. The unicorn also practically embodied the very concept of magic, deep-rooted in the natural world beyond human comprehension. It was thought that the horn of a unicorn possessed restorative properties, able to identify the presence of poison in water or any other beverage, and purify the liquid, making it safe to drink. Some tales even go as far as to say that the magic of a unicorn's horn is great enough to bring the dead back to life. Its great beauty, immense rarity, and valuable horn were said to make it a prime target for medieval hunters, with many stories telling of brutal and relentless unicorn hunts. The majestic unicorn was sought after for a very long time throughout history, and in many ways still is. But where did the legend of the unicorn come from? The roots of the unicorn myth date as far back as 400 BCE, when the Greek historian Titius first documented a unicorn-like animal in his writings on the region of India. In Titius's work Indica, the first mention of a unicorn-like animal appears in the 25th fragment, likening them to wild asses, as large as horses or even larger, with white bodies, dark red heads, and their eyes a dark blue. He continued to describe them as having a horn in the middle of their forehead, one cubit, or a foot and a half, in length, the base of which is pure white, gradually turning black before tapering to a crimson needle point. Those who drink from these horns once made into drinking vessels are immune to convulsions, sickness, and toxins. This colorful animal that Tejas describes is most likely a fanciful rendition of the Indian rhinoceros. The rhinoceros's horn was once considered in India to have healing properties, and was sometimes made into drinking vessels decorated with three bands of color. Even so, the belief in the magical healing powers of the unicorn horn was to become an integral component of the unicorn myth. Tejas also claimed that this unicorn was exceedingly swift and powerful, so that no creature could outrun it. They would fight with thrusts of their horn, they would kick, bite, and strike with their hooves. But they were not fully invincible, as they would perish under the blows of arrows and javelins. They would not allow themselves to be taken alive, such was their pride. Tejas, famous for having a particular interest in the fantastical, had described a captivating creature unlike any other. And it is from his writings that became the foundation upon which the myth of the unicorn was built. 
the Greek philosopher Aristotle confirmed the existence of the one-horned creature, adding that the Indian ass is single-hooved as opposed to cloven-footed. Julius Caesar, writing circa 50 BCE, records the existence of a stag with a single horn, much taller and straighter than any had seen before, living in the ancient and dense Hercynian forest in Germany. The Roman historian Aelian, writing in the 2nd century CE, describes the unicorn much in the same way as Titius, noting that it can be found in India, though describing their fur as red in color rather than white, and with a black spiraled horn. They are said to be gentle with other animals, but prefer solitude, and only mingle with others of their own kind during the mating season. Like those before him, he notes that they cannot be captured alive, at least not once full grown, and that drinking from their horns will cure ailments. These accounts, by prominent historical figures deemed trustworthy and reputable in their time, helped to perpetuate the unicorn myth throughout the centuries. In the first century CE, Pliny the Elder gave this legendary single-horned animal the name by which we know it today, Monoceros, or Unicorn. Though he describes it as a horse-like creature with a single horn, Pliny adds that it has the feet of an elephant and the tail of a boar. The Monoceros, or Unicorn, is extremely powerful and, of course, cannot be captured alive. Though physical descriptions of the unicorn continued to vary in these early writings, the character of the animal remained constant, as these early accounts outlined the qualities that became associated with the mythological unicorn. Speed, ferocity, nigh invincibility, healing powers, and elusiveness. And in these early accounts, the unicorn is universally depicted as temperamental, and impossible to capture, with a magical horn capable of healing numerous ailments and toxins. Over time, the unicorn would acquire additional significance as a symbol of purity, protection, and medieval chivalry, going on to develop religious connotations, sometimes employed as an allegory for Christ. During the third century, Alexandrian scholars translating the Old Testament from Hebrew to Greek replaced the Hebrew word riam, meaning wild ox, with the Greek word monoceros. Due to this translation, the word unicorn appears in some English translations of the Bible, including the King James edition, often with references to strength and ferocity. Tertullian the Carthaginian author, writing around 190 CE, believed the unicorn to be a symbol for Christ, and the horn of the unicorn a representation of the cross. Saint Basil asserted in the 3rd century that the horn represents glory, power, and salvation, and that Jesus may be called the son of the unicorns, since the unicorn is irresistible in might and unsubjected to man. By the Middle Ages, the unicorn was well established as a religious symbol and became associated with moral virtues, with particular emphasis on chivalry, heraldry, as well as chastity and purity. So great was the medieval fascination with unicorns that narwhal tusks and antelope horns were often passed off as unicorn horns and sold at great expense by traders. Additionally, cups made of ivory and ground tusks and horns from the east were likewise said to be made from the unicorn's horn. Further fueling the popularity of the unicorn was the increased distribution of the medieval bestiary, where it is often depicted beside a young woman deriving from its association with purity and chastity. The unicorn of medieval legend was believed to have a fondness for young maidens, while Titius and other writers described the unicorn as being virtually impossible to capture alive, 
It was later thought that young women, virgins in particular, were capable of taming unicorns and assisting in their capture. The characteristics that had become associated with the unicorn by the late Middle Ages are evident in the Unicorn Tapestries, a series of seven tapestries currently housed at the Met Cloisters in New York City that depict a unicorn hunt. Believed to have been woven over a ten-year period from 1495 to 1505, we can see the unicorn's healing powers as it cleanses the drinking water for other animals, its ferocity as it defends itself from hunters, and its susceptibility to the powers of a young maiden. There is some speculation as to whether or not the seventh tapestry, The Unicorn Rests in a Garden, was originally part of this series. But these tapestries, as they currently hang, demonstrate the unicorn's power of everlasting life, as we see the unicorn killed, but then later, alive and well. As time would go on, the unicorn would become a staple of fantasy stories, appearing in fairy tales such as The Brave Little Tailor from Grimm Fairy Tales, and fantasy novels such as The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. Whereas many other beasts of mythology and folklore were shown as malevolent and destructive, quick to hunt and kill people who crossed their path, the unicorn was all that was good in the world, and would hide deep in the wilds, away from the world of mankind. Its beauty, elusiveness, and inherent magic give it an air of awe and mystery. While today the unicorn can be seen as particularly feminine and a quintessential element of high fantasy, the unicorn has for centuries been a symbol for benevolence, luck, healing, light, magic, mystery, elusiveness, rarity, the old gods and the new, and the power of the natural world. In short, the unicorn has become the paragon of purity.